going live so good morning or good afternoon or good night for all attendees uh, we are starting this session and uh, our first speaker is here with me eric soriano and is ready so i'll ask Enric to take the stage and do his uh, presentation so good luck Enric. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jorge. Then, well, uh, this is the first presentation of, of the morning. If you are in Buenos Aires, so I hope you, I hope you, you enjoyed the, yesterday the, the dinner, and uh, you are you are now here fully charged to to start. So uh, my my talk is about uh, vector tiling and uh, the styles applied mainly for hydrography data. We have done this uh, this project to integrate the vector tiles as a as a new source for for our products, and we wanted to share it with you. The point here is that we have used this for hydrography data, but it can be applied to to any other fields. Uh, as in the end, we are talking about geometries, but well, maybe we will focus on, on this. Uh, to tell you a little bit of background, uh, I'm from Guadaltel, which is a company that works with with the e-government and DAS mainly. So we have a, a background together in, in the company of, let's say, different worlds that need uh, at a certain point need, need to talk. So it has been very uh, useful for us to enrich our experience inside the company and to offer it to the customers because the spatial information traditionally is not uh, integrated with the other processes so it has made us realize how in some parts it has helped us to make our customers realize of the importance of the of the gis in a in a general workflow let's say so uh, this has been a, a development that we have made for the uh, Guadalquivir River Basin Agency, let's say. And uh, I will show you now, uh, we'll just into the, the details. Uh, as I have commented before, uh, we had in the, in the beginning of the project, um, we had a scenario where we had uh, different worlds to be integrated. In one hand, we had the management of a river basin, which is the extraction of water, the, the management of the rivers themselves, cleaning, uh, drowning it, uh, all that, which uh, was separated from the, the actual uh, GIS uh, data at the very beginning. So uh, it, we, uh, we provided a, a solution where they could integrate the, their data easily uh, in their usual processes. I mean, imagine that you have a form that you need to fill and you only have the coordinates, but uh, in a separate database. And then you, from time to time, uh, have to create a, a layer of points or a layer of lines. And from time to time, you publish it. They, it it's valid, but they are, uh, they are, let's say, photographs of of the actual status of the of the database. So uh, we created a we provided a together with them a, a, an easy interface, so uh, they we could give them access to uh, to tools, not only QGIS but also uh, tools on how to publish the, the information. Of all, of course. You have uh, your server and open layers or whatever. You have a, a server for to connect to a database, to a layer, and you can publish it e easily. But uh, we have to consider that not only in these both worlds, mm, we have to consider not only the GIS users, but also the non-GIS users. So we developed a framework putting all these pieces together. We will see the technology stack and uh, giving them the facilities, the, the providing them with the, the tools to create uh, different maps and uh, linking it to their actual database so they could publish the, the information in, in real time. 
So we built, uh, we will see it later in, in detail in a, in a little demo on how we have proceeded with that. Uh, we we provided them with um, with this tool that w where we were able to choose different base layers, okay? And with these base layers, uh, they could have a background for their businesses, and then they could select which of a set of tools they could be could be added to to this map and considering the the layers and also the the tools uh, we could have a, a fully opera operational map with this uh, information could be easily integrated and managed by again non gis people i'm sure that you are thinking that you can do all this stuff with qgis uh, and so on but again the the reality on this even if you provide training to the user is that if you you deviate a little bit from the from the usual use case users will probably need help so in the end if they have a an ad hoc uh, application it all becomes easier easier for them so uh, we when we built it we tried to enhance and preserve all the integrations capabilities because it was all modular and standard oriented following the DOUC standards. That, that is the key for sustainability for all of us. So then they could publish layers, WMS, they could publish WFS, even the transactional so they could edit the, their data. They could also provide, uh, provide the metadata when they uh, incorporated a, a layer so in let's say in three steps publishing the the data plus the style plus the plus the metadata they could have a layer a uh, complete layer and become make it almost a an SDI and spatial data infrastructure because this data could be published and um, discovered but by other by other tools with the metadata and on top of these three basic functionalities you could make mashups which we did so they could integrate it in in their businesses applications or mobile apps for the on-field uh, on uh, work and also well to to disseminate information through through social networks but uh, this is a, a long-term run and we need to to be updated and we need to to provide the users with with good technology and make them aware of what is in the in the market and incorporate them to provide them added value to to the solutions that we are we are developing with them and uh, during during the past year we, we improved the the tools that we have with them but uh, the time came to to vector tiles so uh, in a sense, we need, uh, even though there are very new technologies, brand new technologies, uh, in the moment that we develop this, we need to consider uh, the balance of all the, of bringing these spectral tiles into the, the tools. So, uh, this, you in this case, you need to consider a few things to see if it is worth for the organization, because if it in the end doesn't provide added value or the cons are bigger than the pros, then, well, you can or wait or discard it. So in principle, uh, we considered uh, together with the customer that the vector tiles were kind of the future because it was the an evolution for for dealing with vector data in a different way that uh, we were used to with the WFS. Uh, with a lighter format, uh, considering the it is compressed and can be rendered um, very very fast by by the browsers, by the map viewers, and uh, then we have another another pro, which uh, was uh, the fundamental for this decision, which was the reduction on the server side processing. As you know. Uh, 
you can make a tray of this of this uh, PBF. I'm talking about vector tiles and the production of PBF files from the database. So in the end, you have different uh, levels of Zoom, and you have different, uh, let's say, tiles that you need to to provide to the to the map viewer, and uh, you can catch them. So if you have it uh, in a in a folder structure, the following stack or something like that, uh, you can navigate through it only accessing to the concrete folder and the concrete file and without a uh, server-side processing once you generate it, of course. <laughs> so uh, this kind of cache was uh, really, really nice for them and they we together thought it could be an, an, a real enhancement because uh, considering that uh, most of the or many of the layers that they were dealing with uh, are not uh, actually very very do not have very constant updates they could be uh, stored in cache for a long time so also the processing will be very low and the pro will be to have vector a vector data stored and ready to be to be served also once you have all the vector data in your own uh, browser then you can do whatever you want with them it's not a, it's a change of concept uh, considering that we were used to WMS where you provide a, a style in the in the server side and then you have the then you have the the tile or the or the image of the from the database and with a certain um, with a certain style but now you have the data in your browser now you can play with it, now you can edit it, now you can move it and you can also uh, define your own styles so it uh, it became easier to, well it became a, an enhancement for, for the users of course we have it, uh, we had it with uh, WFS but as you know it's not as light uh, there we, we have the this is in a comparison with WMS. If we compare with WFS, we have the the server side processing. So it was a it was a clear option to go to the vector tiles, and we went in. So we considered, as we have well, I've been commenting in a, in advance in the previous slide. We considered uh, different uh, different uh, check uh, check actions to know. Uh, if we were uh, about to integrate it, how we could do that? I mean, there are few, there are few tile servers for PBF. There are different approaches. There are different tools. Uh, the same for these tiles. What we need here is again three things. We need a, a server for the PBF, something to manage these tiles, and then put the pieces together in the in the web map in the in the browser. And render everything to, uh, together. So we needed the in the moment that uh, we went for the vector test, we needed to consider all this in order to choose the the technology and the approach for the user. So uh, depending on what kind of technology and implementation we we choose, we will need to face a, a learning curve for them for the, their installation and their maintenance. Also, by, by by the time of this uh, development, uh, the there were not many reference implementations. So it, now we have more of them. In, in this phosphor year, we have seen few, but uh, we have not many many things to choose. But uh, we need to consider the, the existing and options. Also, the the performance if the data were to be updated very frequently or or not, on, or how to catch it. And then you have to consider it uh, not only from the technological side, but also from the user's uh, perspective. You have to know their skills, if they are able to, to manage all this. If you provide them with a different uh, web server to, for, for the PDF and a different tool for the, for the styles and so on, and they are going to maintain it, maybe not all the users are, are able to it. 
uh, to do it and also to provide them with a with a tool that was more or less uh, good with the user experience. So uh, finally, the decision was to to evolve the existing tool and incorporate the the PBF, the vector tiling, as one as one extra layer of functionality. So uh, by the time being, we had this uh, this stack of technology where you can I have it well I have the full stack here but I have extracted here for discussion or for you to to have it only the the related to the the technology related to the to the to this uh, vector tiling so uh, the data was in a post GIS database and um, for for producing the PDF files and um, and the store it we used your server storing all the pdf in, in cache in a in a separate folder as you know as you have done for many times over for many different services and then we put a, a layer on top of open layers we which we call mapea mapea 5 that uh, well that is our contribution to to the open source because it's also uh, an open source project that that we were we were using so uh, with this technology stack uh, we uh, maintained the interface that the users had okay for the same interface that they used it to configure a map did not change because it was in the layers in the data management and for the data management we tried to keep the same appearance that a wms it is not the same, of course, and if we enter in a in a vector style, well, this is a tough thing. We have Mapbox styles, MapLibre styles, we have uh, Maputnik also to, to generate the styles, but it was not feasible for, for them to use that kind of tool, so we integrated everything with the with the existing tool, GGS Cloud, GGIS Cloud. So uh, we took the information from the from the database. The geo server was uh, the renderer, let's say the producer of the vector tiles info. And finally, we had a specific style generation which was stored together with a PBF. So when the when open layers retrieve the PBF data, we also loaded that uh, that specific file and translated it directly to to the open layers internal uh, internal. Uh, rendering styles and with this approach we we built the we built the, the vector tiles and we integrated it into into the tool as i have commented uh, well, uh, the pbf were requested by by the viewer and the json uh, was uh, used for the for the styles and then everything translated to, to open layers and I will go quickly to the demo because I'm running out of time. But uh, just to tell you that this is uh, just the beginning. Of course, uh, we know how um, there are many, many, many things still to do. For example, the level label management. That's a never-ending story. If you have dealt with dealt with uh, with layers and putting labels and so on, you will know it's uh, it's really a, a tough thing. So we need to to improve it also providing capabilities of advanced styling where well, we have basic well colors uh, stroke fields and that kind of styling but also uh, give, give a little bit more and uh, for those uh, layers which are uh, continually evolving in let's say in real time or live or daily or weekly we need to create uh, some kind of script to receive all the all the layers and make uh, the the cache of the PBF as let's say real time, even though it's not actually real time because you need to receive it and so on, and it, it doesn't go directly to the database, but to refresh it from from time to time, so the users can can have uh, everything uh, updated. Um, this is uh, twenty up top. But just to let you know how how we we were dealing with, with it, uh, we provided a, a simple a simple user interface where you could change the 
the colors, change also the change also the, the stroke as we have commented, the opacity. I'm going very fast now. And also the the labeling. Here uh, we can choose the the name of the column that we are that we are using for labeling and then applying it. Still need to improve there. You will see it's not a an easy thing as you can see. We will try to make it along the the river, but uh, you have it there. So uh, well, this is this is it. We have more more use cases with points with with polygons mm, we have offered the the users uh, how to create the the maps uh, and so on but well this is the this is the the main use case that we wanted to choose as uh, we were dealing with with hydrography data and this is how they they usually update the the tool with the layers and the and the tools and uh, this is it, Jorge. I don't know if there is questions. Thank yeah. you very much. Thank you very much. I, I enjoy your your demo. Thank you for showing us your your demo. Um, uh, we have uh, one question regarding the translation between styles and the open layer styles. Uh, can you? Talk yes. About that? Yes. That's it. Uh, yes, it was a, a really tough discussion in the in the team, and there's still an ongoing discussion. We have uh, we have uh, for each uh, let's say for each technology, they there is not uh, let's say a, an homogeneous uh, way to do it. Uh, we there are slight differences that make finally the uh, the style that is not properly loaded depending on the on the viewer. So from our side, we consider to keep uh, with map box styles. We also consider to keep with Maputnik styles. And we took a subset of the JSON files that are, uh, that are let's say, uh, compatible with, uh, with Maputnik. So we could uh, to, uh, use it as a tool, but we do not have a full, a full correspondence. OK, we have simplified GeoJSONs that could be more or less following the same syntax, but for the moment, we do not have a complete uh, a complete translation for, for that. We, in the future, we, we plan to evolve this styling and, and try to converge to the to, to any of the solution or, and the tools that are in the market. But for the moment, it's very, very, very adapted to, to the use cases that we have. So we read the JSON and then we translate and we put the color in the line in open layers. It's read from that JSON file. I think this is the oh. <laughs> this last sentence was the answer actually. <laughs> <laughs> and, and also regarding your your editor, so yeah. you, you provide tools for the the end user to edit the style. Is it uh, uh, data dependent? You can have, for example. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, for example, uh, you have to think that well, this is a this is a vector. Uh, this is a a PBF data, so it's a little bit different. But this tool came from WMS, came from a long time ago. So there we have a let's say full compliance with SLDs with the style layer descriptors, and that's what we stored in the server in the Geo server. Uh, together with it. So we have a quite a full capabilities to edit uh, to edit a layer uh, according to SLDs if we use WMS. And it is data dependent because you can say if you have this value, you can have this, you, you will have this this color, for example. Uh, in this case, we have not uh, evolved so that much. We only have the the simple, the simple, let's say, the simple uh, rendering. But as we have all the interfaces in the tool to make that kind of filtering, it's also in the in the roadmap 
to add those those kind of conditions. For example, for the labeling, we are choosing which field is the one containing the labeling. In the next step, we will see if it is one, put it green, if it is two, put it blue, and that kind of thing. Yeah, that would be, be nice. Uh, one last uh, question, or no, we have more. <laughs> uh, one is, is really, is this uh, demo publicly available? Uh, I don't. I think this is still under development. You you have the link there, but uh, I don't know if it will be available for public use because I'm now in the in my own network. In any case, this uh, this will be available. I think in the in, in the website of the client, the the river racing agency, as in Spain, all the. We have a lower all the first of all all the tools that you need to provide to a client uh, if you have an open source alternative you should use it and once you deliver to the client uh, it becomes a state property let's say and can be shared so it's kind of guaranteeing the open source initiatives so uh, once we deliver this to the client is theirs and this is this is public so going to the website they they will have the this published probably yeah okay good to know and another question is related to the pdf file generation it's uh, created on the fly or do you have to create uh, the pdf files every day uh, that's that's the thing uh, we for the moment uh, they are created uh, in advance let's say uh, or or we are catching as as they are requested let's say but in the end we we will have a big catch but one of the things that we want to do is the catch real-time update which is uh, to regenerate it try to have the catch really updated and synchronized with the database uh, and the only in certain in certain layers because hydrography is a very tough thing if you consider all the points that you need to render and so on so on the fly things will be maybe too much but considering the the degree of, of updates for the hydrography for example uh, i think we we will go probably to to catch it from from time to time okay thank you very much enrique uh, thank you very much for your presentation and for this, uh, these questions. Uh, we have our next speaker next to us. Our